songs together, okay? God, we love you. We just pray that today you be yours, God, that we can be sensitive to your spirit, God, you can open our hearts and um, allow us just to uh, spend some time with you today um, undistracted from all of our week. God, just, uh, just bless this time in your name. Amen.
sweets our ears. God, we love you. Have a seat. And you're good doing. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mission City. How are we today? Morning. Great. Sweet. Uh, my name is Russell. I'm the lead pastor here, and we are a community that makes Jesus known. Uh, we're so glad that you're joining us today. Uh, on the screen right now, there's going to be a QR code. Uh, this QR code, if you hover your uh, camera app over it, it'll open up a link on your phone and it'll take you to our website. Uh, you can do a couple things on our website. We have something called a Connect Card. Uh, if you are a part of our community, we encourage you to fill that every single week. Uh, so one, so that we know that you were here, but two, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, if you are interested in serving, uh, or would like just a, like a prayer request that we could pray over for you, that's a great place to do that as well. Uh, also on the website, you can uh, give as well at missioncitykc.com slash give. Uh, the QR code should open up that link as well. I got a couple things coming up that are huge. So over the summer, uh, June and July, we're taking a break from our regularly scheduled community groups. Now, uh, those, those groups might continue to be meeting if you're a part of them. Uh, they, there's a Tuesday night group, a Thursday night group, and a Sunday night group. Uh, and so it is at the discretion of those groups if they're meeting and those, those leaders if they're meeting. Uh, but in place of that, we're doing a few church-wide community group events. Uh, and so set your calendars for Tuesday, June 21st. At 6 p.m., we're going to meet at Young's Park. We'll have dinner provided. We'll play pickleball. We'll hang out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but something we've heard is uh, a lot of people know the people that are in their community group, but they don't know. They haven't had a chance to meet other people in the church. Uh, and so this is a great opportunity for you to do that, to, to connect with maybe people outside uh, of the people you might meet with on a regular basis. Uh, so come do that. It's going to be great. Uh, look, really looking forward just to spending the evening uh, with you as well. Bring a lawn chair. Uh, there is a little picnic area, uh, but just bring a lawn chair just in case. There might not be enough room uh, if, uh, if, if uh, everyone shows up. So please do that. Uh, also, just to let you know, too, is uh, there is no service July 3rd. We'll have like a devotional online that you can watch if you want to, but there'll be no service uh, on July 3rd. Uh, the reason being, so uh, we don't own this building. We don't own Cinemark. Uh, but th we uh, get to rent this place, and they've been incredibly kind to us and generous to us uh, in our time here. Uh, but we also have a setup and teardown crew that does this uh, every single week. They bring all the, the, the stuff in. We unload a trailer uh, of supplies, and we set up a church, and we tear it down every single week. Uh, and so we've looked for opportunities and intentional times during the year uh, to give that team a break. Uh, and so we do it twice a year. One of the times is July 3rd. Uh, the other times is typically the Sunday after Christmas as well. So it's usually twice a year, just to give you a heads up. We'll keep communicating that, and I will probably just be here in my car waiting like a, like someone waits. I don't know what that is, right? Just waiting, just in case you show up, and I'll give you a coupon or something to, to get a cup of coffee. Or, I don't know what that means. But now, now don't show up just for the coupon, just to see if I'm, if I'm, if I'm honest. Because honest. the Lord knows I'll forget about it. So... All right, uh, last thing, uh, and then we're going to read a passage of scripture that we're going to talk about today, and I'm going to invite Jake up. 
uh, is, is this is uh, there is a women's retreat uh, that's happening July 29th through the 31st. And we don't want you to miss it. If you're a, a woman, a part of Mission City, or, uh, or if you're not, you're just checking us out, uh, we would love for you to come to our women's retreat. We've rented a, a great house uh, for uh, just y'all to hang out and to spend time together growing in relationship with one another and also growing in uh, your relationship with the Lord uh, and pursuing him together. And so we don't want you to miss it. Uh, Sign-ups right now, if you go to our website and you, there's a there's scroll bar kind of section on our website, if you click the save the date, it'll take you to the events, the, uh, the event registration for the women's retreat. And you can sign up there. It is $100. That's, that's just kind of the cost of, of, of renting the house and meals and so on for that. Uh, if money is an issue, we don't ever want money to be an issue. We would rather you go than you not go because of finances. Uh, and so please let us know. Please sign up. Uh, and if, 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 if that is something you're interested in, you can come talk to me uh, or you can talk to Melissa as well. She'd love to connect you and make sure that you get signed up as well. So now today we're continuing in our, uh, our series in the book of Psalms. Uh, today we're going to be looking at, uh, I believe, Psalm 16. And so as Jake comes up, I'm going to read this uh, as, as he is getting set up. So preserve me, O God, for in you... I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offering of blood, I will not pour out or take their names on, on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night, also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol and let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Thanks, Russell. Uh, how many coupons do you got for that July 3rd? <laughs> just one. Just ask for a friend. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's good to be with you all this morning. Um, excited to share just kind of what God's been talking to me about through reading through Psalm 16. Uh, anybody in here a big journaler or uh, you keep a diary or anything like that? I'm going to put my hand up so that's not me. Okay, great. Got a few of you. Thank you. Um, like, so uh, one of the things that I find really interesting about the book of Psalms, um, before kind of studying as I was just learning to read the Bible, uh, what this whole Christianity thing was about, uh, it seemed to me like the book of Psalms was very um, up and down, uh, like the authors were kind of like schizophrenic or bipolar even, it's like on one page everything is great and God you're amazing and I love you and on the next page like everything is calamity and this is the worst and how could you let this happen to me and it's like what is going on here? Um, and so it took me a, a little while reading that to realize, like, well, it's because this isn't a story, right? Like the rest of, or most of the Old Testament is a story. It's a story of how the world was created or how God's people uh, grew and, and what happened to them and what they chose to do or chose not to do. But Psalms isn't a story. It's not a narrative. Um, really, it's a collection of, of prayers or journal entries. It's if, if David or some of the, the other authors kept a diary, it's kind of what we get from them is their experiences in life and their prayers and how they're responding to that. Now, uh, David's a really interesting person to kind of take a look at as he's attributed with uh, a roughly half or so of the Psalms writing them. And it's important that we kind of, like, I guess it's important that he is the character that writes so, so many of those because he experiences so much. Like, I would say, uh, we'll do a quick rundown here in a minute, but I would guess, now some of you might be like world travelers, experienced a lot of the world, I don't know, maybe you've led really interesting lives, but I would bet that David probably experiences as much in his life as like two or three of us combined. So let's just do a quick rundown here, right? Uh, from what we know, and David's story is in First and Second Samuel, so he's anointed to be king, eventually, uh, of Israel as a boy. Uh, then he kills a giant who is terrorizing God's people and uh, wanting to take over Israel, leading the army of the Philistines against them. 
Uh, soon after that, he becomes a musician uh, in Saul, the king of Saul, or the king of Saul, Saul, king of Israel's court. He plays music for him, becomes the leader of Saul's army. Saul gets jealous of him and all the fame that he gets, so he starts to try to kill him. At one point, he's throwing spears at him in the midst of the castle, uh, trying to kill him. Uh, he loses his best friend uh, in, in battle. Like the, So Jonathan, his best friend, dies. Uh, he is on the run from the king who's trying to chase him down. He's living in caves with a group of followers. It's been ye spends years in exile on the run until he finally becomes king of Judah at 30. Uh, and then seven years later becomes king of Israel as well at 37. And then fast forward like 23, 25 years later, and he's now being exiled out of his kingship by his own son which he eventually will come back and all that, but he's gonna lose a son in the midst of all that. Like, it's just, there's so much ups, like the highest of highs and the lowest of lows that David experiences throughout his life. And um, so I find it really fascinating that he is the one who writes so many of these songs and we get to experience so much of his response to these experiences in his life and his prayers throughout all of that time and all of that life experience that he has. Now. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Psalms can often be like they feel a little like back and forth because sometimes this is a psalm that David's writing while he's in a cave, and sometimes it's a psalm that he's writing while he's king. And uh, again, in the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And I wanted to share with you guys my experience on Friday, which really helps cement this idea of the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Okay, so. Um, I was praying about just a way to uh, describe this uh, or to kind of make this point about uh, how the songs are written and how they're organized. And I went back, I have this journal uh, or this uh, sort of a diary, I don't know. Um, but this is how much I journal. So the first entry is from 2013. The most recent entry is from 2020. I still got about a third of the journal left. So just to give you an idea there. Nothing in there was helpful for this method. Just wanted to get that out of there. That's how little I journal. Anyway, so Friday, uh, Thursday actually, I found out that we had some issues in our basement. So there was some water bubbling up. Uh, whenever we ran like dishwasher or washer and dryer, whatever, water starts coming up. So, okay, we got a problem here. Uh, we need to do something about it. Uh, so Friday comes around and I, um, against better counsel, uh, try to do it myself. So, um, I, Casey, you're here, you he advised me to, to go have somebody do it. I, you know, hindsight, maybe that was a good idea, but uh, went around, tried to do it myself, found the tool that I needed to go to get, go to Home Depot. I'm gonna make this really long story, try to, try to shorten it up for you. Three Home Depots and another tool rental store later, I finally got the tool that I needed. Uh, probably spent as much money driving around in gas as I would have, you know, otherwise, but um, get the tool, come home, and, and in the midst of all this, driving around, frustrated that we have water coming up, like not knowing what to do, those prayers would have sounded one way. We'll just leave it there, okay? Um, very frustrated, very like calamity, this is what, this is the worst, like this is the bottom. Um, but then coming home and like actually, so, figured out the right place where I should put the snake into, uh, get it in there, start pumping it. Like, anyway, it's a, I'm not gonna use the proper terminology here. So let's just say, eventually, I got the junk out, okay? Um, and the water starts flowing freely, and those prayers after that much, sounded much different, you know? Like, thank you, God, this is the best, you're the best, life is good. Um, and so even just in the midst of a few hours, in our human existence, we can go from the world is ending to this is the best, right? And so we see even in our own lives, just in those short periods of time, we get this the highs of highs and the lows of lows, and, and we get to experience that through David's life, and um, I find that to be fascinating. So as we are going through this song, I just want you to keep that in mind, of, you know, the, the tops and bottoms of life and where we go and um, how the roller coaster that we kind of ride, uh, what, what, where do we run to? in those high points and in those low points. All right, let's jump into it. Uh, so Psalm 16, uh, like Russell said, if you got a Bible or uh, app on your phone or whatever, uh, you can go ahead and follow along, or it'll be on the screen. So it uh, starts out, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Uh, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. 
And I find this just opening to be really interesting. Number one, I think, just based off of that first verse, preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Uh, I, I get the sense that maybe this is one of those times that David's maybe more in exile or more in kind of the cave-like state. Like, I need to be preserved. I need to be, uh, some translations will say, deliver me, O God. Like, I am in a state of where I need you to show up, basically. Um, and then you, I take refuge. But the next couple verses kind of remind me also of something that Jesus is going to say later on in Matthew chapter 22. So he says, uh, this is the, the psalm, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones. And Jesus is going to say, when he's asked what the most important things are, what the greatest commandments are, he's going to say this, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. So I, I find this interesting parallel between David's view of how he is going to respond in a situation where there may be trouble, where he may need God to show up in some way, his response is, you are my God, you are my God, you, know, you preserve me, I have no good apart from you, love the Lord your God. The saints in the land, they're the excellent ones, love your neighbor as yourself, like he acknowledges, even before Jesus is ever going to say this and make this the most important thing, that this is the most important thing to him, like I'm going to acknowledge God is my God and ones who follow him and the ones who are with him are the excellent ones in the land. I'm going to love my neighbor. Now, I think Jesus' command goes beyond just fellow believers or, uh, you know, the other people who are worshiping God, but that's, you know, we're kind of getting the point here. Uh, let's keep going. It says in verse 4, here's kind of the contrast of that. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their name on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion of my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Now, this is really uh, kind of a fascinating passage from David's standpoint. If you think about his life. Uh, first off, so this idea of, of blood offering, or I'm not going to pour this out, it's, it's all just imagery that would be known at the time to be pointing towards, you are the God that I'm choosing. You are the one true God. All of these other gods that you know people are sacrificing to, they're pouring their own blood out to, or they're pouring you know whatever it may be that they're sacrificing to. I am going to say no; those are not real gods, or I, I don't follow them. I don't worship them. God, you are the one that I worship. I will put you above everything. I think like if you want to put it into our more common context, like, like who are what are we spending our time doing that's in a worshipful way apart from God? So David said, I'm, I'm gonna, the only thing that I'm going to worship, the only thing worthy of my life is giving it to you, God. I'm not going to choose to chase after any of the other things that all these other people are chasing after. Uh, he says, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Which, again, this is an interesting uh, part of this whole psalm. Because if you think about inheritances at the time, so David's the youngest of eight children of a sheep farmer. I don't know how many sheep we can divide up in this particular case, but normally, not even is it like an even distribution between all eight, like the oldest is going to get the best. And then it's going to like whatever's left over kind of goes to the second and whatever's left over there to the third and it just like kind of trickles down. So being the youngest of eight in this culture, he doesn't have an inheritance. Like from his earthly family, there is no inheritance for him. But yet he says, I have a beautiful inheritance, acknowledging, again, the only good I have comes from God. My own, this beautiful inheritance is that he's talking about is only from the Lord. He goes on to say, I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. Uh, I found this pretty fascinating. Any, uh, if there's any of you that get into like the, the nerdier side of the Bible, diving into like word study or anything, uh, one thing I, as I was reading this, it was like kind of questioning to me because uh, if you think about the heart and how it's mentioned in scripture, uh, sometimes it's talked about as like it's evil, uh, you know, like, like we should avoid uh, listening to our hearts in some way or it's kind of tied to the flesh. Um, but the word that's literally used here actually is like kidneys, which is a completely different body part. I'm not sure how we got to heart there, but it's all about like the inner self, our conscience like what actually drives us from the inside. And so what he's saying here, that the Lord gives me counsel, but also I have in me a conscience, a, 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 
personality that drives me to good deeds and it instructs my way. And I think the only way that he gets there is because of the time that he spends with God. Because he's chosen God to be his everything, that's, that's created and that's formed his conscience, that's formed his decision making. Like, like when we uh, give that time over to the Lord, the more we spend time with God, the more it begins to shape how we act, what we do. Uh, I was going to mention this at the end, but I think it's just more appropriate now. Like, we have been going through this series prior to the Psalm series. We're going through Acts for a while and everything, right? We're talking about sharing your faith, how to get out there and talk about Jesus with other people and all that. Uh, oftentimes, in these kind of settings, we'll talk about, like, uh, how to do good things or how to be good people, how to uh, whatever it may be. And I would just like to just challenge kind of in the middle of this sermon that all starts with spending time with God. Like, if you are uh, in any way, like, encouraged to go and share your faith or to be a better person or to um, anything that is regarding to Scripture or what we kind of believe the idea of Christianity is, it all begins with spending time with God. It all starts there. And, and David lays this out in the beginning. There is no good apart from you. For me to receive good, for me to uh, send good out, I've got to receive it from the one place that good can be found, and that's with God. And so um, that's, again, was going to be at the end, but I just felt like it was right. Hopefully that blessed you in some way. We'll pray about it. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. Be not you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. Uh, now, this word shield, uh, depending on your translation, might have something else there. It's this idea, basically just kind of all encompassing the idea that they had at the time of what the afterlife looked like. It could be Hades or hell or just a, an underworld type setting, but it's you're not going to abandon my soul to be forever separate from you, to be forever in this dark kind of place, to, to die eternally. Basically, you will not abandon me uh, in the end. And I think that's kind of thinking back towards that beautiful inheritance that he knows. He knows that there's a hope coming for him, that he will not be abandoned forever. Uh, this holy one that he talks about is also kind of an allusion to Jesus. Uh, Peter is going to use this later in his message in Acts chapter 2. Uh, during the sermon at Pentecost, he's going to show that Jesus was this promised one, this chosen one who would not see corruption, the holy one, uh, which is kind of just an interesting nugget for you. I'll leave that with you. Um, and then let's, let's just read this last verse, and then we'll kind of talk about what this all means. Uh, you make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Um, I don't know if any of you in here, uh, I don't know what your week looked like. I don't know what life looks like for you right now. Maybe you're uh, maybe more towards the high end or more towards the low end. There's stuff going on that's just kind of sucky right now. Or, um, or maybe it's, it's happy, and that's great. And, or maybe probably somewhere in between. But the reality is, is that I think what David is laying out for us here, and I've kind of already mentioned this, is just the, the, the deliverance, the preservation, the goodness, the joy, the path of life is all found in the presence of God. It's all found in the presence of God. I have a friend uh, who often reminds me when uh, I let him know just kind of some of the negative things that may be going on or things that I'm struggling with. There's nothing that 20 minutes in heaven can't fix, uh, which I always find really interesting. Uh, so I'm like, we're about 10 minutes. Can we get there with 10? Uh, <laughs> but like, I, I find that to be so true in my life that, that there is nothing that when I spend time with God that ultimately I either don't have to worry about anymore because I'm reminded of how much he cares for me, how much he loves me, how much he's for me, or I come up with a solution because through prayer, God just lays something on my heart that's going to be the end all be all, like the, it's gonna be the solution. But in the end, there's nothing that spending time with God doesn't, doesn't solve, doesn't fix, doesn't actually make better. Now, it might not be fixed in the way that you want it to be. It might not be solved in like the, uh, hey, there's a truckload of cash that shows up on your door the next day. But it, you're going to find the peace that you're looking for. You're going to find the joy that you're looking for. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. That's what David says. Um, Jesus refers to it like this. Oftentimes in the New Testament, he's going to talk about our relationship with him being like vines and branches. That he is the source of where we find life, that all the nutrients, the water that a, that a vine would give to a branch would come, would be the relationship that we have with him. That we are like this branch that's attached to him and everything that we need for life comes from him. Um, there's a 
story in, uh, and I apologize, this is just kind of rapid fires, try to keep up with me here for a second, but there's a story uh, of when Jesus is, when he dies on the cross, uh, this is one of the, just why this is, this story will make sense, hopefully, or maybe make more sense to you, or maybe you're already aware of this, but um, in the uh, in, in the time that the temple originally was constructed, this main temple in Jerusalem where people would come and worship God, they brought this uh, Ark of the Covenant, or this space that was believed to be where God's presence was, and they put it in the middle of the temple, and they surrounded it with these big curtains. And basically, it was to wall off people from going in and being too close to the presence of God, because that might kill you. Uh, you might be too unholy or not pure enough to enter that space, uh, so that might damage you. So we're going to wall that off. But what that also means is that there's a divide between us and the presence of God. Intentionally, but it's there. Now, when Jesus dies on the cross, what we see is that the veil gets torn in two the moment he gives up his soul. And what that does for us is that symbolically shows us that the opportunity for us to now enter into the presence of God is available for all followers of Jesus. That's incredible. Like, that's incredible. What David's talking about right here is that in his presence, the fullness of joy is found. In his presence, we find the path of life. In his presence, all of these good things, the only place we find good things, is available to us because of Jesus' death. And when that veil is torn, we get to enter into the presence of God. just want to read this real quick because I'm, I'm starting to get excited. I know. Uh, here we go. <laughs> We are invited into the presence of the almighty, all-knowing, living God of the universe who loves you and calls you son or daughter. You are an heir with Jesus if you follow him and believe in him. That's available to you. That's the inheritance that, that David's talking about here. That's the opportunity that we have to be in the presence of God. Uh, so I just want to take some the time that I have here this morning to encourage you, to remind you of the goodness that's found in God's presence. Uh, that David's talking about here, and to just encourage you that if there's anywhere that you run in times of trouble or anywhere that you celebrate in times of happiness and joy, uh, that's apart from the living God. I would say in those happy and joyous times, uh, not to say that there's not other good things to do. Uh, there are. Uh, those things I mentioned earlier, that when we are in the presence of God, we're uh, encouraged to go and share our faith because it's so much more real to us. When, when we're in the presence of God, we become better people because he encourages our soul and gives us joy, and we go about life in a more pleasant manner. Um, those are good things, but in the end, being in his presence is the source of all of those things. Uh, David, again, says it like this. He alone makes, the, me, makes known to us the path of life in his presence of his fullness joy. And I just want to remind you again in the midst of this that David and some of these areas of his life where he's writing this from and, and his experience of life and all the things that he's been through, uh, he would say the same thing, that, that the fullness of joy is in God, whether he uh, is killing a giant or he's hiding in a cave, whether he's uniting God's people or having spears thrown at him in the royal court, whether he's dancing because he's brought this presence of God back into the nation of Israel or he's being exiled by his own son. In God's presence, there is the fullness of joy and he makes his path known to him, the path to life. And so uh, I'll, I'll invite the band to come back up um, and, and they're going to lead us in a couple other songs. But uh, this is the question uh, that I was starting to get to earlier and I just want to leave us with here is what is our hope in? Or where do we find, where do we run to in those different moments of our life? And maybe it's, you know, high or low or middle ground. Where do we try to find the joy or the peace or the love that God offers to us in his presence? I would say that, you know, we find, uh, we find pieces of it in life. Um, whether it be, uh, like, like, just think about joy for a second. It's a really good meal. You know, that's just like warms the soul. Like, it's just good. Uh, for some reason, the uh, like skillet cookie at Chili's is coming to mind right now. Amen. It's a joyful experience, let me tell you, if you've never had that. But it's a peace. It's not the fullness of joy. It's, it's, a, it's a momentary opportunity that God has given us through his grace to experience a, a piece of it. Um, when you have a, an opportunity to gather with good friends and there's laughter and fun and it just warms the soul, it's an opportunity to experience a, a taste of joy, and that's a good thing. And, and hopefully uh, you have the opportunity to do that, but it's not the fullness of joy that's offered in God's presence. Um, when
when you're at the lowest of points in your life, when, when all things seem uh, like they're just falling apart, uh, God makes his paths known to us, and when we search for good things, all good things are found in him. I just want to encourage you with this. So where are you going to in those times? Where is your hope? And where, honestly, is, is, you, is your joy being found? Are you settling for just a, a piece of joy? Are you searching, continuing to seek for the fullness of joy that's offered in God's presence? Uh, one of the coolest things about church every Sunday is that we get to experience this all together. Uh, I pray every Sunday that we would get to experience the presence of God with us in this place and we get to do it together, which just makes it that much better. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to lead, just I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll talk about some ways that we can respond here. But God, I, I thank you for the opportunity to share this message. I thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. God, it's amazing who you are and what you are and that you allow us to come into your presence. And I, I pray for anyone in here uh, that doesn't experience that on a regular basis or is just kind of maybe, maybe there's an agreement to this message, but they're just not sure how to respond or, or what gets them in your presence. Or maybe they've tried and it hasn't quite gone the way that it sounds like it has for David. I just want to encourage them, God, with your spirit just be present here with your presence fill this room to show them the fullness of joy to make the paths of life known to them god that your goodness would reign and rule in our lives and in this place in this church would you be here with us and would we worship you for it would we give that back to you in praise as we sing these next couple of songs that we love you it's in jesus name i pray amen um so like i mentioned there's a couple ways that you can kind of respond to whatever god may be doing in your life right now or in your heart and just speaking to you. We, we have communion offered every week, just a, an acknowledgement of Christ's sacrifice and in this, the context of this message that gave us the opportunity to be in God's presence whenever, wherever. And we had that opportunity to go and be present with him, uh, that, that Christ's body was broken and his blood was shed for us to have that opportunity. Uh, we'll also have uh, people praying for you, so I'll be on one side, I think my wife Sarah or somebody's going to be on the other side, um, just available to you if you would like to, just, even if you just have questions, maybe it's not just like even a prayer, but just like, yeah, this sounds really good, but I don't know how to do that, like we'd love to, to encourage you in that, uh, love to share how we do that, and then uh, maybe that'll kind of give you some tools to, to begin to do that, but ultimately, just want to leave you with the encouragement of all the good things, the fullness of joy, love, and peace, and mercy is found in the presence of God, and if you're not experiencing it, or making the time for it on a regular basis, man, it's, you're missing out on the best part of life. We, we're talking about this series, sorry, I'm rambling here, but the last thing that's coming to mind here, which in this series, we've titled it, Ordinary, it's a prayer book for ordinary exiles, because this place is not ultimately where we're destined for, like, if you've ever felt kind of out of place, or like, you don't belong here, like, the world is moving in a different direction than you, the opportunity that we have to go into the presence of God is to be home. Like, that's where we're no longer exiles. That's where we're no longer different from the world around us. It's actually in his presence that we feel at home and at peace as well. And so if you uh, want to feel that and you want to get into that place, just make the time for it. Don't do it. You just got to do it. But, okay, I'll wrap up. Love you guys. Thank you.
say that you are, are good, and God, I just pray that, that we would just live our lives, God, in your presence, we find the joy of, of living life with you, God, not for you, but with you, that we would have time and space that's carved out to, to, to be present with you, God, to find, find the joy in being with you, but God, also as we just go about our day, God, that we would do it in mind that you are with us, that we can live in your presence as we work, as we play, as we uh, hang out with friends and whatever we do. But God, just pray for this group, God, that we experience the joy of being in the presence of the Lord. That you would move today. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so glad that you were here. Uh, if you need any, have any questions about some upcoming events, you can stop by the Connect uh, table. They would answer any of your questions. God bless you and have a great week. We'll see you next time.